Well, this is the larva of a mosquito. I got it from a pond, uh, from pond water. And today I'm gonna show you actually how I got it and how I put it under the microscope. Of course, you have to pack everything together first. That's what I'm doing right now, preparing my little field box. And then off I went uh, to go to that little pond and uh, to find uh, those uh, mosquito larvae. Well, not very far uh, away from here, there is a lake uh, hidden behind the trees. I found out about that lake which I didn't know just a few days ago. So I'm gonna go there today right now and I'm gonna collect a water sample to put under the microscope. Well, it was a warm, nice afternoon and a little bit uh, hidden away uh, from the road. There was this, uh, yeah, stagnant water. Those places are an ideal place, not only for frogs and tadpoles to develop, um, but also for many insects and that's a mosquito larvae. I found this one I, and I'm just going to show it to you right now as well. And those mosquito larvae, what they have is they have a very interesting back end uh, because uh, they breathe air, even though they grow and develop in water, they breathe air. And what they do is, is this back end is called the siphon and that is basically they stick it up into the into the air and the rest of the mosquito is dangling, of the larva is dangling downwards into the water. And that's basically how they breathe and they swim around and uh, they eat and uh, they feed until they have reached a, a certain size and then they start to form a pupa and then you have an adult uh, mosquito and uh, the nice thing about those uh, larvae is is that they're kind of transparent and for this reason you can actually see also the movement of the organs and uh, those are either our blood vessels uh, or these are the trachea uh, trachea are the network of tubes that they use for breathing um, and you can see all of that um, so basically that's uh, how I arrived at the pond I put everything down I had a quick look around and I saw well there were a lot of algae growing on the surface there um, and you could see a lot of insects uh, flying around there as well and there was a lot of decomposing and decaying wood as well so there was also some decomposition going on so well I'm gonna take some of this stuff along um, and at home I want to have a, look, a closer look at uh, what I find usually those uh, natural sources uh, their biodiversity is quite high so you will not only find uh, mosquito larvae like these ones here but of course uh, you can see that they're surrounding the whole larvae is a whole bunch of algae as well and um, I found uh, I'm gonna show you later I found some uh, so-called copepods which are water fleas and some other larvae Nopleus larvae. Um, so there's the, the biodiversity is quite high. Usually, when you make an en enrichment culture at home, when uh, basically you add a little bit of fertilizer to some pond water, and then you kind of wait what's kind of growing. Um, usually, the biodiversity is not quite as high, um, but the natural sources generally are pretty good uh, and uh, quite interesting because you find all sorts of things. So yeah, that's basically what I've done. I put down my little field box. It's actually a toolbox that I have uh, converted into a little field box. Uh, and I started to, to collect uh, some of the pond water. And one of the important things is, is that uh, you always agitate the ground a little bit because many of the things, uh, the living things, they settle down on the ground and in the sediments. So what I've done is I've taken out a little bit of this water, put it back in to agitate uh, the ground. And then uh, you also can get more organisms uh, along this way. Yeah, and I kept on filming this uh, little critter here. Um, I found out that it's way too big, uh, even for the low power um, objective. Uh, so I could not even fit it on um, Yeah, properly. I think it was over a centimeter long. Um, but those large organisms do have the advantage that uh, because uh, there's, if they're transparent, you can actually look into the into the, the larvae as well and see how they actually uh, work in, inside. I think that's also kind of fascinating. Um, I don't like touching these algae myself uh, because they might cause allergic reactions maybe uh, for some of them are not so good um, but for those copepods those water fleas well they love this stuff because there's lots of food there and of course these algae also produce plenty of oxygen and as a matter of fact you can even see the oxygen bubbles caught inside the algae uh, themselves so that is uh, basically what I've uh, basically uh, collected uh, and so I simply put it back into my little field box and uh, took it uh, back home uh, and at home I immediately had a look at it uh, under my microscope and one of the things that I found is this is so-called the Nopleus larvae and uh, if you look very carefully you can see actually that it has a dark red eye spot uh, at its head that's the eye and the organs of course are also moving around and that's also one of those nice uh, things about these organisms is 
that uh, yeah, you can look at the inner workings um, of these uh, little critters here. Um, they're called water fleas because they move around in such a very fast and jerking uh, manner. Um, they are related to the crabs, to the crustaceans as a, ma as a matter of fact, uh, to the shrimp maybe even. What I heard is, is that in the 19th century, the whole area here where I'm living used to be swamp area. There were lots of these small little ponds um, around uh, and uh, I also heard that the situation at that time was that uh, there were so many mosquitoes even that they even had malaria in this region here something that's completely unknown right now but one can imagine I mean these uh, ponds here are breeding places for a lot of insects well and the folks living over there in those uh, houses over there well I think they're gonna experience uh, quite a lot of mosquitoes Well, time to go home. I am already hearing some thunder, um, so it's going to start raining soon. And that's, of course, going to replenish again the little pond. At home, this is what I saw. Um, there were also some other water plants uh, growing on there. And I put it under my stereo microscope and, of course, a whole bunch of other insects as well. I have no idea what this is here. Looks kind of cute, uh, but uh, I have no idea what it is. Um, in any case, I discovered very quickly that uh, the, some mosquitoes were already developing. As, an, as a matter of fact, around three of them um, started to develop overnight uh, and uh, started. And one of them actually escaped. I'm going to show you later at the, towards the end of the video how I'm actually going to put an adult mosquito under the microscope, which I had to kill first, unfortunately. Or fortunately, you don't want to mess around with mosquitoes too much. Again, another water flea. And while we enjoy this little water flea moving around, I'd like to invite you again over. Uh, to the description below because I collected a whole bunch of links there is a microscopy shop now also not only available on amazon.com but also for Germany uh, for Canada and also for the UK um, so if you are living in Europe and if you want to buy some microscopy related products please do visit that shop as well um, I have also a link to a fundraiser I'm saving for a new microscope uh, so it's gonna be easier for me to take pictures on a new project I've uh, got the website uh, microworld archive.org and for that I would like to buy a new microscope please do have a look at the fundraiser uh, below as well and of course I've got a whole bunch of other YouTube channels microscopy related um, all of the links are below please uh, do have a look uh, there as well and back to the mosquito larva. Um, if you want to reduce the possibility of malaria and in certain regions, well then the first thing that you have to do is, is you have to break the reproductive cycle of those mosquitoes. Um, and uh, because certain mosquitoes are able to carry the malaria parasite. And one way of breaking this reproductive cycle is to make sure that there is no standing water around. So you have to actually dry up all of those ponds. So now let's have a look at an adult mosquito and know that they were actually sitting on the bottom um, of the lid. So I put some alcohol um, on some tissue paper and uh, I've already opened it carefully before so I know that there are now three mosquitoes in there sitting on the lid and I quickly moved it over on the alcohol for a couple of seconds and the vapors of the alcohol now killed uh, those uh, mosquitoes unfortunately one of them flew away I've seen um, but the other, um, yeah, there was also a second insect, which was not a mosquito, but there was actually one mosquito, one of those two, that's a mosquito. And I immediately put it also under my stereo microscope. Um, and one of the things that you notice is that those mosquitoes, they have gigantic antenna. Um, they're using those to, of course, uh, sense uh, the mating partner or even over long distance. Um, they may be also are you going to use those antenna to actually sense if there is a victim somewhere uh, to suck blood from. And this is, of course, the way that uh, diseases can be passed on. Um, and uh, if you look at it under the microscope, then you can see, well, it's quite a, quite a lot of intricate details that you're able to see. Unfortunately, the alcohol not only killed the insect, but because the alcohol pulls away and withdraws water, this causes the insect to also shrivel up a little bit and to become a little bit distorted and dried up. That's why the appearance is a little bit not as quite as nice as you probably would um, expect. Uh, but one of the things that one could do in houses, of course, uh, make a permanent mount of it uh, for to preserve the insect uh, for the future generations, of course. Uh, I'm not going to do that. Uh, but uh, I'm just uh, going to look at it uh, under my stereo microscope. And so what these adult insects, uh, mosquitoes now do, of course, is, is they start to mate and they start to lay eggs again into the water. Um, yeah, thousands of eggs. And then uh, within a few days, uh, new mosquito larvae will develop. I think that's enough about mosquitoes today. I think uh, those mosquitoes are going to keep us busy anyway. Now over the summertime, at least here in Europe where I'm living, um, summertime and springtime is of course mosquito time. It's always a big uh, nuisance, of course. Other countries of the world have to deal with that uh, all year round.
we have to reduce standing water if we don't like those uh, um, animals. I wish you all the best. Happy microbe hunting as always. Do leave your comments below and see you around next time. Bye bye.